Our next speaker is State Representative Ken Roberson. Thank you. It's an honor to uh, follow a couple of the students and a former student because that's why we're here tonight. It's all about the kids, you know. Uh, Crossroads has been very important to our community and many kids throughout the state of Florida at a critical times in their lives. Uh, thank you to everybody who helped put on this event tonight. Um, uh, there's been a tremendous outpouring of support for Crossroads, and uh, I thank everybody for for all that they've done. It has certainly been a great help. Um, it's been mentioned previously about the success of uh, Crossroads, and I'm not going to go into the gut any further, but uh, like Representative Kriegel Zaid, uh, Zach uh, mentioned, when we first out, found out about this, you know, I said, how could this happen? It's, we were flabbergasted. And uh, the uh, first thing we did was uh, write a strong letter to the governor, and, uh, and and I talked to the governor's office several times. Uh, his uh, legislative uh, director of legislative affairs, uh, John Gostello, and uh, we were really concerned because in the 2012-2013 budget, we specifically stated in the budget that the Department of Ju Juvenile Justice should close state beds before closing private sector beds because it's been proven that they're more cost effective and. Uh, give a better return uh, to the taxpayer. Um, in response to our letter to the governor, we did receive a letter from Secretary Wansley uh, Waters uh, from the Department of Juvenile Justice, and I'd like to take just a moment to read an excerpt from her letter to me, just so in all fairness y'all know what the position of the Duve Department of Juvenile Justice is. Uh, she states, first, it's important to clarify why the Department of Juvenile Justice would not be continuing its contractual relationship with Crossroads after June 30, 2012. The original three-year contract with Crossroads was executed July 1, 2006, and was not renewed an additional three years through 2000, June 30, 2012. No additional renewals were allowed in the contract, and it expires June 30th. In Florida, our reforms to juvenile justice emphasize investing in front-end services such as civil citation, day treatment, mental health counseling, and to keep more youth from entering the deeper and more expensive end of the system. Where residential programs exist, services in the community provide better outcomes, serve more youth, and are of greater help to the families overall. In short, the Department of Juvenile Justice is reforming the juvenile justice system with the goal of matching the right youth with the right intervention services at the right time. These reforms are working, hence the decreasing need for residential services offered under the contract. And the letter goes on uh, and on. Um, but after such a strong outpouring of support from the community and all the emails and the phone calls to the governor, uh, we did get a two, uh, two, um, an extension of two months. We were going for six months so we could keep Crossroads open until uh, we could really give us more time to uh, find an answer. Uh, but we did get the two months, but I can tell you we would have never got it if it hadn't been for all the support that we've had in the community. Um, I feel, and many other legislators feel, that the program should be considered not on uh, when the contract is renewed, but on their performance and the success. And Crossroads has, for the last 26 years, had the success. And, and we all celebrate the fact that there's less juvenile delinquency in the state and a less need for the services. But I can tell you from my past experience, and some, sometimes uh, kids need to be taken out of their environment they're, they're in and put in a new environment to turn their lives around. And that's what Crossroads has done. So I believe there will always be a need for programs like Crossroads. And uh, legislators like myself and Representative Kriegel and other legislators around the state are very upset about the direction that the Department of Juvenile Justice is taking. That's, Crossroads is not the only program around the state that's being closed. And uh, we're very concerned about it. 
and uh, we're going to take a, another look at it in the next session of the legislature. That doesn't help us right now. We're still fighting uh, to keep uh, the program going. And my, the most recent conversation I had uh, with the chief of staff at uh, DJJ, uh, they informed me that there are going to be some contracts available that AMI kids and Crossroads could possibly bid on in the future. And there are some other state agencies like the Department of Children and Family Services that have residential programs um, that, that are available and uh, might be available you know, to Crossroads Wilderness. Um, in closing, I'd like to just uh, read to you the mission statement of the Department of Juvenile Justice. It says the mission of the Department of Juvenile Justice is to increase public safety by reducing juvenile delinquency through effective prevention, intervention, and treatment services that strengthen families and turn the lives of troubled youth around. And that's what Crossroads does. So we need to keep it open. I'm one legislator that's going to fight to keep, to keep Crossroads open. And uh, thank you for all your support, and thank you for being here.